we have a responsibility as, as believers, as citizens of this country, to be responsible for ourselves and make good decisions. Um, I, was, I, was, I was minded of uh, Dr. King and all the challenges that they had. And one thing I, I remember that they continuously did, they continuously prayed. And that's what we have to do now, we have to continuously pray. And, uh, and, I, and I've heard the reports of, you know, all, all these things being lifted and the changes that are happening. And, and, and it is happening. But this is the thing that I would suggest, if, if I could suggest anything, is that it's going to be critical for us to keep ourselves safe, to make sure we stay safe and make sure we do what we need to do. And then it, and it's going to be critical, too, is to, another thing that's going to be critical is just don't be so overwhelmed with what people are saying when you know that your life is in your own hands. Um, uh, a lot of things I don't agree with, uh, but it, 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 things are going to open back up. They're going to go forward, and, and we have to be ready for that. Uh, the timing, we have to be ready for the timing, but, but right now, regardless of how things go, we have to keep ourselves safe. We have to have things that, in place that will work to keep us safe. The masking, I think, is good. The gloves, I think, are good. Uh, the, the distancing, I think, is good. We have to stick with what we're doing if we're safe now. And then, and, and then as things, things open up even more, then we make the adjustments accordingly. But what I'm praying is that we don't get out of who we are. We are obligated to pray for the office of the president. You know, those that are in authority and that's given. And we're praying for the office, not necessarily the man. When you pray for the office, then God can bless the office and he can use the man or the woman or whoever's in that office to do his will. So we need to, we as believers need to be praying for the office of the president of the United States, the office of the governor of Georgia. We need to be praying for those office. And, and, and then that way we can trust God to use people because you got to remember, no man is greater than God. No being is greater than God. And so if the, the, the com God's commitment to us is if we would humble ourselves and we would pray, then he would hear from heaven. If we would turn from our wicked ways, he would hear from heaven. And then he would heal our land. God is able to get beyond anybody, get past anything. And so we just need to keep our focus on God. And we, we as believers are obligated in this season to see God's mercy and to see God's grace. We need God's mercy and his grace because it's nothing too hard for God. I was reminded that um, there was a prophet in the Bible and, uh, and he had asked God, he said, God, don't let it rain for three, three and a half years. And God took the rain away. He took the rain away. And then after that, he came back and he said, God, you know, will you let it rain? And God allowed it to rain. But this is the thing that happened when, when you pray, it seems like God is not answering. He's answering. He hears us. But if you remember when the, when the prophet, when he, when he asked God for rain, he told his servant, he said, go out and tell me what you see. He said, first he came back, he said, I don't see anything. Then he said, go back and see what you see again. He said, well, I see a hand. So what happens is when we're praying, we have to keep our eyes on God. We have to see what he's doing, what the movement that he's doing. And then we have to follow suit there. Uh, so please be encouraged. I want to I say, I've got a couple of things that I want to share with you as far as how do we have peace in the midst of all of this and how do we protect ourselves in the midst of all these challenges and all these difficulties. Because we can. We can. But I do want to pray because I want to submit to the Holy Spirit because we need the Holy Spirit to teach us the word of God. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we love you. We bless you. We glorify you. We worship you. We praise you. Oh, Father God, we need you more now than we've ever needed you. We know that you are able. We know, Father God, that you make final decisions. We know that you're sovereign. We know that you're in full control. You know exactly what you are doing. And so, Father God, we humble ourselves. I mean, just, just help us, Holy Spirit, to humble ourselves to where God is glorified, where God is pleased in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, we lift up every situation in all circumstances. Father God, we do pray for the President of the United States of America. Father God, we ask that you'll take him in your hands and use him for your glory. Even now, we pray for the Governor of Georgia. We ask that you'll take him in your hands. And every official, every, everybody that's in a position, God, to make a decision, we're asking you to intervene. But most of all, we're asking you to intervene in the believers' lives and bless them and encourage their hearts and encourage us, Father God, to do your will in this time to pray and to seek your face and to be wise as serpents and humble as doves. Father God, we're asking you to help us. Father God, those that are on the front lines, I know there's a lot of discouragement 
For there's a lot of fear. I rebuke glory to God. I rebuke that spirit of fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, never sound mind. And Father God, we lift up everybody that's serving now, that's out there serving. We're asking for your protection. We're pleading the blood of Jesus, God. We're oh glory to God. We're pleading the blood of Jesus. We're pleading the blood of Jesus, God, because we know that there's nothing that can penetrate the blood of Jesus. That's, that's the redeeming blood. That's the saving blood. And so, Father God, we decree that, that people are turning to you even greater. They're trusting you even greater. And they, even as the country is trying to do something and trying to open up and trying to do all these things, give us wisdom, Father God. Let's not be afraid that we've got to do something. Let's not feel pressure, Father God, but give us wisdom. Let us be in your peace. Keep us, Father God, sound in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, let us not get anxious for anything. Let us not feel, feel anxious about anything. I rebuke that spirit of anxiousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us wait on the Lord. Let us trust you. Let us believe you to provide for us, Father God. Don't let us make, don't let us get into a panic mode where we make bad decisions now, God. Help us in the name of Jesus. This is the finest hour that you can be glorified the most. And so, Father God, let us wait on you. Let us trust you. Let us believe in you in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We lift up every situation. We don't want a spirit of anger. We don't want to be upset with the office of the president. We don't want to be upset. No, God, they're, they're just men. They're not you. And so, we don't want to exemplify them as though they are gods, as though, as though they've got authority, or they've got, no, you are God Almighty all by yourself, and you created them just like you created us, and they need you too now, God. Our president, he needs you to help him to make good, sound decisions. Our governor needs you to help him. Every mayor needs you to help them, Father God. Not only our God, but all over the world, we need you. We need your input, God. We need you to help us. And so, Father God, we lift up all the situations and all the circumstances because we are a nation under God. And so we need to pray one for another. And, Father God, help us to understand we don't know what we would do if we were in certain shoes. So give us that compassion and that mercy and that grace so that we can see you in the midst of our circumstances. Oh, Father, we love you. We bless you. We glorify you now, Father God. I decrease in prayer that you might increase. Yeah, God, we, we need a word from you. We need the encouragement. We need the, the, the strength. We need the love. We need the grace. We need a word, God, in this hour. We need to get instructions from you so that we can proceed and make it to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. So I decrease in prayer that you might increase all of you and none of me. Amen. I am, I've got a couple of things that I really want to share with you that I think would be, would be helpful in, in, in this season. Um, I wanted to look at Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3. Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3. Um, and, and the thought is, how do we, how do we find the peace and we, we find the protection in the midst of all these circumstances? The scripture reads this way, and, and, and some of this is in NIV, but it says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Here, here's the thought who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. We need to be praying that God will heal folks now because the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we're healed. When we look at the doctors and we can look and see the frustration and they're doing their very best, the scientists, but God has the answer. He already knows exactly what it takes. So why don't we just take a moment right now and decree healing in the name of Jesus throughout the earth. Decree the healing of Jesus by his stripes, we are healed. And so we just trust God for, for all the diseases to be, will be healed from those diseases. I've got about five or six things that I really want to suggest as we're moving forward and we're trusting God to, to move forward because everything has got to, it's going to come back together. It's going to open back up and, and we, and we got to live, but it's not the fact that we've got to live, it's how we live. How do we stay alive? How do we stay functional? How do we stay healthy? And I've got a couple of things that I think will help us. The first thing is we've got to, got to make sure our hearts are pure in the presence of God. We gotta make sure our hearts are clean in the presence of God. We have to make sure also that we, we follow the necessary procedures. We have to keep our hands washed still. You know, we have to keep our face covered still. We, there are things that we have to do in order to make sure. See, this is the thing. You can say to a person, don't do this, don't do that. Don't do this and don't do that. And they're gonna, they, in, a, in, a, in, a lot of, in a lot of cases, they, you can tell your children don't do something. But the, but the key to it is telling people how to be safe. If you, if you gotta do it, this is how you be safe. Well, right now, we still need to cover our faces. We still need to make sure we're washing our hands, we're covering our hands, and, and we're, we're keeping a, a certain amount of distance. Uh, but also, we need to make sure our hearts are pure, that our relationship is right with God, that we keep our hearts washed out of fear and bitterness and resentment about people's decisions. 
Because I make a decision doesn't mean you have to make the same decision. And so we have to make, keep sure, make sure our hearts are, are out of hate and, and resentment and thinking of, and, and reading other people's mind and saying, well, their motive is because they're prejudiced. Their motive, we, don't, you, we don't know that. We, what we do know is this, that we are obligated as believers to pray and to love one another. That is important. We need to stay in stride with God so we can see the victory. So that the first thing is we got to make sure we, 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 we do the necessary things in the natural realm, but it's more important to do the necessary things in the spirit realm. The next thing we need to do is we got to saturate our mind with biblical promises and, and, and comfort and care. We, gotta, we have to saturate our minds with, 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 biblical, biblical, with the biblical principles concerning the promises of God, his care for us. Um, and, 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 and what we do is we have to let the peace of, our, of, of heart that comes from Christ be always present in our hearts. The peace, he said, I give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. In order to get that peace and to keep that peace, peace means nothing missing, nothing lacking. There's, there's the way that God can console us, even in the midst of circumstances. But we have to really put ourselves in his hand. We have to really trust him. He, you know, you, you want his peace because listen, I, I, can, I can be at home and and then you hear all of these reports and you hear all of these symptoms and you and all of that stuff is, you know, Satan will take that and he'll he'll reverberate it in your system. And you and, and rather than you having your confidence in God, and you can lose your peace. You can lose your the devil is a liar. You have to rebuke that. You have to say, you know what, I'm gonna turn this off right now because all oh, this stuff is just too much. You, you gotta get out of this this media frenzy. And you, we got we have to get into the word again. So so over in, in, in Colossians chapter three. Chapter 3, verses, verses um, 15 and 16. Um, I want you to go there with me because I want to I read it. Um, I want you to read it. Chapter 3, verses 15 and, and, uh, and 16. Um, and and, and what, is, what it's saying is this. Let me, let me get this because... Uh, 6, 15 and 16. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So we really don't have time to be, to be negative. We really don't have time to be mad and upset with what what folk are doing and what, what we think they ought to be doing. You know, we, we don't. It's just not the time for that. You know, we can't, we can't, you can't change a person's mind. You can't make a person think like you think. But we are obligated to allow God to fill our hearts because we're agents in the earth for the kingdom of God. So we're obligated. So, so and then Psalms 23 and 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This is not the time to, to fear. Uh, we got to know that God is with us and we need for God to lead us his rod and to and guide us every step of the way to keep us out of the pitfalls of danger. You know, you don't really have time to be worried about what somebody said or what somebody has done. We have to do what you have to do, what God is leading you to do in order to be effective in, in, in this season. So, so we don't, we really don't have time. We have to be who we are or else we cannot win. We cannot win the battle. They, it is a battle. It's a, it's a battle, and we have, to, we have to really stay focused because God has already gotten the victory for us. Um, uh, then, and then the next thing is we have to, we have to stop worrying. We gotta, we gotta, and it's not easy. I mean, I'm not insinuating that, okay, you know, well, no, no. We, we have to stop worrying. But there's a, there's, like I said earlier, you, you always want to tell people what they need to do, but then how do I stop worrying? Well, you put your mind on, on God. You think on good things. You, you think on whatsoever is truth. I mean, you... What is truth? Don't, don't get caught up in, it's a lot of, uh, to make news, things have to be bad. And they're magnified in the media arena. They're, they can come out, they can get a piece of something, and they can come out half-cocked and blow it out of perspective. Come back later and say, oh, we missed it. You know, but you, that's why we have to sort of sort through everything and then keep our minds on what is truth. But then, then there's, a, there's a verse over in Philippians 4 and 6 that says, don't be anxious about anything. The, you know, let it run back through your mind. No matter what you hear, what, what everybody else is doing, what is suggested that you do, check with God. Settle down. Relax yourself. Get your mind together. And then talk with God. And in everything, 
with prayer and supplication of prayer and petition. You know, seek God out for, for every step you make, every decision you make. If you've got to go out, you've got to do it. Plead the blood of Jesus. Decree God's protection upon us. Rebuke death. I will not die. I will live. You know, speak God's word. Trust God's word. Saturate and saturate ourselves in, in God's word. The next thing we want to do is we, we have to take our focus and put, and put it on, on God. We have, to, we have to put it on heaven, not this earth. We, we're not, we, we can't keep our minds on, on the earth. Uh, and what I mean by that, all the negative news, all the media reports, all the, you know, president's wrong, the governor, all these people are wrong. Well, they hadn't just got wrong. They've been wrong a long time. But that's not, that's not we shouldn't bash them and, and go after them and all that. It's not our, our, what we should do is we should have a plan in place that says, okay, God, give me wisdom. This is right. That's not, you know, I'm not going to do that because I don't agree. And that's bottom line. You know, make a solid decision and be at peace. Uh, and then, and then, and then, and, and, and we, and you keep your promise, keep your mind on the promises of God because we are heirs with Christ and joint heirs with Christ. So we have the protection of God. We have the blessings of God. Um, and then we have to, and, and I said earlier, we have to seek, we have to seek God's wisdom in, 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 in all, all crises. Uh, you know, we have to see God's way, you know, where God really intervenes and can talk to us step by step, moment by moment. You have to see God's wisdom. Uh, over in uh, James chapter chapter 1, and I want to go over there too, chapter 1, and then I want to look at verses, verses 2 through 5. 2 through 5. 2 through 5. Let me, let me, chapter 1, verses 2 through 5. Let me find that. I don't want to read it. It says, My brother encountered all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, see, this is what we got to be now. See, this is, this is over. We've been praying and praying and praying. It's, you know, we just believe God that it's over. I know the reports and what kind of reports you're hearing. But we believe God that it's over. But we're going to also, he's going to identify that with us. So, so we got to seek God for wisdom. And then this is the thing that's going to be critical. Don't waver. Like when you're really trusting God for wisdom, God gives it to you. You're sure that it's God. Follow it. Follow the wisdom. Don't hesitate. Don't waver with it. You know, whatever, he, if we say be still, be still. I was at the post office the other day. Well, I drove up to the post office. And there were a lot of, lot of cars at the post office. And I said, well, I said, hmm, I'm not going to go in the post office. I said, because it's too many, it's too many, too many cars. So I went on, passed the post office, went home, and I came back later, and there were no cars. So, so I just trust the Holy Spirit to tell me, that, and I, I'm, I've got patience, I've got peace. You know, I've got, I've got the Holy Spirit inside of me, and so do you. It's critical, brothers and sisters, that we, that we realize that, that God still is able, but we have to be anchored in Christ. Anchored. We have to go deeper and deeper. David said, God is my refuge in the time of trouble. We have to go deep and let him be our refuge by trusting him and, and, and not being, getting upset and out of character and afraid. And, 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 and we have to speak to fear. We have to say, God, you know, we, I know you haven't given me the spirit of fear. You have to consistently do that. And, and then what, what you're expecting and, and what you're expecting to happen is as you say, well, God's given me the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. You're expecting to have that, a sound mind. Love, power to resist the works of the, of the enemy, to resist fear and, and, and anxiety, to resist uh, uh, moving too quick and doing the things that you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing in this season and doing the things you should be doing. You know, that's, that's, that's what we want. We don't want fear to push us in a place or cause us to do things that we shouldn't be doing. God is our provider. He, he, you know, my God shall, shall, shall provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory. God can provide for us. We have to trust him. So, so here, here, here's, here's it. Here it is here, brothers and sisters, as, as I'm going to leave, but, but this is the thing I want to leave you with. We must trust God. Trust God in the earth and out of the earth and then be at peace with that. We must speak God's word if we trust him. We must stand in God's word if we trust him. We must speak the things that, that are in scripture. And then, and then what we'll see is we'll see, we'll see the victory that God has gotten for us as things move forward, as they happen. This is what I would do. This is what I'm going to do, and I'm praying you'll do the same. I'm going to take every precaution I can. 
I'm going to trust God. I'm going to stay at a distance as long as I must. We're not, we won't be in the sanctuary until God gives us that freedom, that, that release saying, okay, now it's time to go back. We won't, we won't move before God give us the wisdom. But in the meantime, what are we obligated to do? We're obligated to pray. We're obligated to pray for those that must go out there. We're obligated to pray for those who feel like they must do. We're obligated to, to rebuke anything that is not of God and then ask God for mercy for the things that are him that are affecting this world in a way that maybe we don't feel like it should. We need God's mercy. We need to ask God to, we need to stay with God until everything is turned around. That's what believers do. We, we, we represent Christ. We can't, we can't be unbelievers and believers. We can't be the world and heavenly. We have to be heavenly. We have to be Christians. We have to be children of God. And we have to understand what our responsibility is while we're in this earth. Our responsibility is to serve God, is to allow God to use us to pray to speak life, to speak healing, to speak love, to speak, to speak encouragement and edification. That's what we do. That's what we must do. We must trust God. I love you. I thank God for you, brothers and sisters. And I, and I, and I tell you something, no matter what happens, we need to be anchored in Christ. We need to be saved. So I want to ask you a personal question. Is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life tonight? Is he? And if he's not, this is more important than anything else you can do. I mean, this is more important. If you're not even sure, here's a prayer. Father God, forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. Jesus, please come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I need you, Jesus. I need you. And then, and then once you ask him, believe he's come in, and then speak out of your mouth, Jesus Christ, now you are the Lord of my life. Thank you so much. Jesus Christ, I appreciate you coming in. Now, with my mouth, I confess that you are the Lord. With my heart, I believe God raised you from the dead. Jesus Christ, please baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach me. Teach me the ways of God and the things of God. Brothers and sisters, if you've done that, then you have eternal life. And I pray that peace will be still. I love you. I thank God for you. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith will. Jesus said something real interesting. He said, when I come back, will I find faith? I pray your faith will remain. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed.